Hey guys, congratulations, we got up this morning. So a little while ago, actually, towards the beginning of my channel, I got a comment about advice I would give to new CP parents. Now, it took me a while to make this video because I've had, like, imposter syndrome, and I was like, I don't know if I have any good advice to give you, but I'm a little more confident now, and so I, uh, it's either four or five tips that I have for you. I didn't count them. I think it's five. But here are the five tips that I have for new CP parents. First of all, make notes either visually or written down. You, when I was growing up in the 90s, we didn't have smartphones or camera phones. But I think visually would be a really good uh, medium for you because you can take pictures and video and the doctor can see exactly what's going on. So, either written down in note form, like in a notebook, or visually, I would do that, definitely. So the doctor can see what's going on, and you can tell them exactly in the moment. Also because when it's stressful, when you're really stressed out about your kid, you tend to forget things in the moment, and then you go back from the doctor's appointment, like you're riding back in the car, and you're like, oh my god, I should have told them this, or I should have told them that, and I didn't write it down, or I didn't take a picture so now I have to try to call them back and tell them this and they probably don't have time for me so visually or written down take notes about what's worrying you about your child second always 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 ask questions that's what the medical professionals are there for now my mom had, was a floor nurse at the time so she knew what things to look for she had an easier time talking to the doctors. But the doctors are there for you to ask questions. And if they're, if they're not personable, that's not the profession they should be in. They should be, they're in a profession where they're meant to help you. So don't feel bad about asking questions. They might not be able to answer them all in one sitting. You might have to email them and talk to them in person. In different times but I would email them definitely because then you have a written record of the questions that you you ask them always 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 leave a paper trail third always teach your kids how to advocate for themselves now this is when they're older I had a resource teacher who was teaching me how to advocate for myself I had to do my own test, I had testing accommodations, like extra time, and so I had my own test, I had to get my own test envelope, I had to get it signed, I had to bring it to the resource room, and if I forgot to do it, then I wasn't getting accommodated for that test, and that really prepared me for college. Fourth, remember to, when they're a little younger, to advocate for them, because then they learn that advocating for their rights is something that should be happening. I remember when I was in middle school, I had this teacher in eighth grade, I believe, because we do three-year middle schools in my state, sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade. In eighth grade, I had this teacher who was always mad at me because I was going to the bathroom, like, missing, like, five minutes of her class. Now, I know going to the bathroom for five minutes is kind of long, but I have to walk, well, I had to walk all the way to the bathroom, and then walk all the way back. So that was the long, that accounted for the longness. So it wasn't necessarily going to the bathroom itself, but it was the walk. I had a surgery when I was 11, so I was in a wheelchair with an aide in 6th grade. I was walking with an aide in 7th grade, and then by 8th grade, I was all alone, so walking by myself so I didn't have an aid to hurry me up or to help me or to do anything like that so that teacher got really mad at me and my mom was like you know what leave her alone Carson time to be quiet so sorry that was Carson my dog fifth this is another big one that social media allows Find community. If you can't find community in your hospital, which I would definitely recommend, especially with COVID, I get this 
message all the time. Your your community group is having a meeting. Your community group is having a meeting. You can do this on Zoom, on Facebook, and even in your hospital. Your hospital should have support groups. So look for those. So those are my five tips for new CP parents. I hope that was helpful. If you have another video idea, please leave it in the comments. I will see you guys later. Bye.